And what I would like to do is I would like to now introduce our first speaker, Roz Abercrombie, who is the Executive Director of Regional Arts Australia. She's a creative producer, she's a facilitator, she has a fantastic festivals background, amazing track record of community, of community engagement, of connecting with artists, organisations. So could you please welcome Roz to the podium? <clears throat> Thank you, Nathan. Sorry, I'm just going to um, put my bag and my pieces of paper on my PowerPoint. I have, I have goodies, if you so wish, and I can pass them out. And I'll just wait for everyone to arrive as well. I think I'm set. So thank you, Nathan. Thank you for that um, great introduction and for the context of RANT. Um, I would actually like to acknowledge um, and pay my respects to the traditional and original owners of the land to which we meet, um, and also pay my respects to all the lands across the whole of Australia um, to which Regional Arts Australia works, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Um, as Nathan introduced me, um, I'm the Executive Director of Regional Arts Australia. Um, I'm fairly new to this role. Um, I started like three days before Christmas, which was exciting. Um, so really from the beginning of January, so a couple of months in um, and yeah, and just feeling like uh, over the last few months, like just getting my feet under the table. Um, I want to take this opportunity to provide some context, primarily a little bit of an overview about what regional arts, who Regional Arts Australia is, but also mostly put some information to the Regional Arts Fund, which Nathan's made mention to. Um, because the Regional Arts Fund is available nationally, and, um, and I can give you some information about we've got maybe eight different health projects happening nationally currently, and also have some case studies online of projects that we've already acquitted in the last year. So. I want to provide an overview and some context first, and then we can drill down. Um, and I know the next two speakers also have some really interesting case studies that allow us to drill down into arts practice um, and collaborative creative practice in healthy, health and wellbeing spaces. So don't worry, it's not too text heavy, it's just you know, the start of the slide. So Regional Arts Australia has been around for 70 years. Um, started as the um, Australia Council for the Arts, which obviously now is OSCO, so very different space. Um, and the today's organisation is a company limited by guarantee, a not-for-profit national peak body. Um, and we're positioned to increase the understanding and the appreciation for regional arts and creative industries across regional, rural and remote Australia. Um, and we champion the issues and the concerns that are common to practice and practitioners, but also to organisations, support organisations, front services and such that are working across the country. Essentially anyone that's not working in a metro city, we are interested in supporting, hearing from and working with. Um, a little bit of our background that we basically, we work across all three tiers of government. Um, we have a direct relationship with the federal government. We work with state-based and with local governments, but we also work across other arts orgs. Um, our premise is to enable artistic expression and build the interests of artists, organisations, audiences and communities. And we see it as a sort of four platform space. We do this through four tiers of work. So we do this through our advocacy work. And as I say, we, we're the peak body and as our advocacy work, we do work across those three tiers of government. Um, we work very closely um, with our parliamentary friends and are currently very busy um, in the Canberra space as we're close to being calling a, a federal election. Um, and it's our job to champion and promote and work with and try and get better outcomes for regional artists, remote artists and practitioners. And we need to be that voice into Tony Burke, Mitch Fifield, and to campaign in that space. So I'll talk a little bit about that shortly, but we're very, we're going old school. We've got badges, bumper stickers, as well as a social media campaign. 
Um, so we work across an advocacy space. We work across practice. And our practice, and I'll drill down into this, sits with what is called the Regional Arts Fund, which is what I'm going to talk to you about in some detail. Um, Artlands, which is a national um, regional arts gathering that happens biannually across the country. We have a regional arts network, which we only started last year, came on the back of a really um, consolidated consultation process with um, artists nationally saying, what do you need? What do you want? What would you like us to be? What are we not doing? What do you want us to do? Who are we not talking to? Um, and the Regional Art Network came out of that. We have a project called Amplify, um, and that is essentially to literally amplify regional practice. Um, and from that, we produce publications, webinars, various different um, tools for us to advocate. We also run national fellowships. Um, our last national fellowship program, we had five artists across the country in 2017. It takes us a while to get these things up and running. Um, who each received up to $30,000 to expand and deliver their, pr their own personal professional practice. Um, we're in the process now of uh, applying for funding for the next iteration of that fellowship program. That's our professional development and we look at exchanges. So we're quite diverse in our practice um, and we're actually about supporting artistic practice. And we do that through partnerships. Um, and uh, Sorry, my uh, slide's a bit wonky. And our partnerships are incredibly important for us. And uh, we're a very, very small organization. There's 2.4 of us and spread nationally. That's quite challenging. Um, so we have an office in Melbourne, which means we can move a lot. We have an office in Alice Springs. And then we have hot desks in every state and territory that we can go to. So I was finding I was spending an awful lot of time in a coffee shop in all sorts of places. So we've made partnerships to have a, a presence in every state and territory. Um, so our partnerships are really important. Obviously our connection with First Nations nationally is incredibly important and that's something that we will continue to work through and build and understand where best we are placed to, to support and to advocate in that space. Um, we have a, a building a partnership with Regional Australian Institute who I know are here today with Creative Partnerships Australia Arts Access, we've just built um, a new partnership with Arts Hub, and we're starting to look at heritage tourism and those creative industries that we can then partner with to connect. Um, we've just found out last week, it became public last week as well, that um, the University, um, Queensland University of Technology, was successful in receiving an ARC linkage grant that was in partnership with um, the Regional Australian Institute, Regional Arts Australia, Performing Arts community um, and I think it was Ridge Way in Queensland um, for a three-year social impact of the arts and health project. So that's an, a really exciting research project where um, arts and health are integrating in, and leading in both an academic space but very much about community. Um, and we also are building a partnership. We've just um, been developing a partnership with some people in the UK called Creative People and Places and they are fantastic. They work in all areas across the UK where the, no, the percentage of people who go to the arts is minimal. So all their projects go to places where people don't normally or don't knowingly engage with the arts. And they have 21 projects across the whole country. So we're just, we worked with them last year with Artlands Victoria, and we're just expanding that partnership right now to allow us to develop artistic exchanges for artists to connect, whether it's in Wales or Scotland or parts of the UK with practice here and vice versa. <coughs> and on research is our last area. We have sort of four tiers um, and a bit of that I've just talked through. And then we do the work these partnerships across industries and that's where I think when Nathan was talking, that's really important for us and that's why it's so exciting that we you know, have been invited here to talk very much in a very, very art specific space, but to look at those partnerships and say, it is important, it's imperative that the arts and someone from the arts industry, whether it's a practitioner, whether it's from an organization, whether it's a creative director, is around the table at all of these industry conversations. We cannot be in a space where um, decisions are being made across education, health, particularly agriculture, commerce, construction, built industry, and the arts aren't around that table. So often the arts come or will add on at the end or they're the part that's snapped off when it gets too expensive. And we need to, and I see Regional Arts Australia's 
importance and significance is to make sure that someone who is best placed is at that table advocating, championing, supporting. It doesn't always need to be us, it can't always be us, but it can be us to say, of these industries, we need to make sure that someone's there and we can then facilitate with our RPAs and with our members who's available and who can go. So this gets into the Regional Arts Fund. And as Nathan mentioned, the Regional Arts Fund is an Australian government program, so it's a federal funded program, that supports creative industry and creative practice across the whole of the country. Um, it's really an exciting program, and we say it's like one of the most successful um, programs to deliver arts funding nationally, in that it is a federal pot of money, but it's dispersed through the states and territories by the states and territories for the needs of their state and territory. So each state and territory does it differently, each state and territory has slightly different guidelines, different funding rounds, and it's very needs-based to that state and territory, which makes it quite unique to the big part of funding that often sits at a national level that just gets carved up, regardless of that local conversation. And this is how we carve it up. So we have, um, we basically, we look after this pot of money, and the federal government give us this big, big contract. Oh, sorry. Um, and we work on a four-year deed. So it's quite good. We have a lot of ability to be sustainable and, and strategic in that space. And then we have what's called our regional program administrators, our RPAs, who are responsible to each of their state and territories to manage and disperse and facilitate those funds to their state and territories. <coughs> so Darwin Community Arts up in the NT, uh, Country Arts WA over in WA, Country Arts South Australia in South Australia, Flying Arts Queensland in Queensland, Regional Arts New South Wales, Regional Arts Victoria, and Rant, who you've met this morning, this afternoon. Um, and so when you look at this, we can start to go, well, whilst we're a small organisation sitting in the middle, once we start to spread the wings, then, we, then the national presence connects. Um, within this Regional Arts Fund, there's all these different sort of funding opportunities. So there's a competitive grants round, which we call community grants. Um, it's probably a little bit outdated in its language. It's really an arts grant. Um, if people want to work in the community, they can. If they want to work as an independent practitioner, they can. It's an arts grant, but it's positioned as a community grant. We also have things called quick response grants. So you don't necessarily have to have the planning in place over a year or two. You can say, actually, this opportunity has presented itself, or I need X thousand dollars to mount something or remount something, and that opportunity is available. Um, some of our RPAs um, use their pot of money to pay for cultural workers out in the field, and that's at their discretion, and they can choose to do that or not. Um, we also have this different pot of money that the federal government has, which is called strategic projects. And that comes through Regional Arts Australia in the consultation with the communities where we can devise, and it's, it's so exciting coming from a funding space where you know, I have to I've always had to work so hard for each pot of funding, to have this pot of money where we can then go to the federal government and say, these are our four strategic projects for the next four years. This is what we want to do nationally. This is how we want to break down the boundaries and the barriers of state and territory. This is how we want to work across NT, Tassie, and New South Wales. And these are the art forms and the mechanisms that we want to do that. And the federal government, and our, our, who we report to there, are incredibly supportive as long as there's a national context and as long as you know it's been fought out they're very open to these ideas and that is a you know that's amazing this is incredible um, space that we need to really grab hold of and learn and and, and a activate really well and then we have Artlands which um, until last year was delivered by each state and territory it was like a baton it's a bit like the Olympic Games for the arts or the regional arts where uh, a state gets given the baton and they deliver art lands on behalf of that state, um, on behalf of Regional Arts Australia, on behalf of the federal government. That baton, um, last year after the back of a review, came back to Regional Arts Australia and uh, I was the creative producer and the director of Artlands Victoria, so basically this hot baton just came straight back at me, which was very strange. <laughs> um, but the context of that and what makes that so great is that I have the last two years of Artlands Victoria understanding behind me so I can actually work then go well what does what does a regional gathering look like what should a regional conference look like so that's that's elements they're the different things that the regional arts fund can do um, and the community grants um, essentially can be delivered 
to, in so many different ways. There is no one fit fits all, which is why it's so important. Um, and it's perp I mean, there are some key, oh, I'll go back. I'll say there are some key for, for overriding sort of um, objectives that it needs to, you need to fit under. They're so broad. Like you would have to be not working in the arts to fit into them. They're really broad. Um, but what I want to talk to you about a little bit is some of the exciting things that Regional Arts Australia are doing now with the Regional Arts Fund. So we often talk about impact and we have to, and I know there's lots of conversation around this, we do have to show our value, we do have to show our impact, we do have to get better. I personally in my organisation has to get better at measuring and valuing our impact and then being able to champion that. Um, and we talk about our, the Regional Arts Fund to federal MPs, to member orgs, to the Department of Communication and Arts. We actually report to them every two weeks. Like it's like quite a, you know, it's an ongoing communication. Um, and what we're talking about there is in each four years, because we are running four year funds, we're looking at, in for example, 2012 16, 1,458 projects that we're not necessarily holding ourselves, but we're responsible for and connected with. Of that, there's six cultural workers, 30 strategic projects, 378 community grants, 844 quick response. That's quite a lot. Um, and what we've done in the past, and I've got one here. If anyone's interested, can take one. Um, we've taken that data from the four years and we've produced what we call, uh, that's a fact, a little publication that that con contextualizes that national narrative and says, this is what's happening across the states and territories, and then this is what's ha happening nationally. And it's a way to sort of measure those impact, but also shine the light on a couple of case studies. What we're doing currently, literally, um, my colleague MJ, who's in Alice, is literally inputting data right now. We're inputting 890 projects into the back end of our new website that we're building right now so that we can actually build a picture and a narrative and a measurement through infographics and we can show the needs and the demands and the successes of that. And what we're doing is we're taking the Monash model, which I'm sure we all are very familiar with, and we're mapping, the mo we're mapping that this is, and this is hot off the press, like we are literally doing this right now, and in a week or two, um, this will be online on our website and it will be interactive if everything goes to plan. Um, so you're sort of seeing some stuff before it's out there. Um, and we are going to be mapping, we're going to be able to map through MMM1 to MMM8 or 7, every single, well, after 980, we've only done the first two years, so we will do more as we have the capacity, all the different regional arts projects that are happening across the country. You can search them by the code of the Monash model. You can search them by art form. You can search them by electorate, which is really handy right now. You can search them by financial impact. You can, research, you can search them via how much, they, how much funding they got. You can research that and say, OK, this is so much funding. How much actually went to the artists? What was the artist value in that? And then what was the follow-on value of that? So we'll have all these different ways on our website where anyone can go to it and basically champion the value of the Regional Arts Fund. And essentially, we've been doing this for the last four years or eight years. But we've been doing it in our little publication. And we're now, um, as MJ, my colleague, says, we're taking our organization out of the filing cabinet and activating it. Um, so hopefully, MJ and Esther are going well, and this is happening. But it will mean that then, nationally, we can start to really have a national conversation about regional arts, regional remote arts practice. What's really important when you look at this is that you can see where we're not meeting demand. We can see where there's no dots. We can ask why. We can also see in some places, when, when you see this live next week, there's some things where you get a big blue dot and it means that there's heaps of, let's say, dance projects in New South Wales. So then we can go, well, why? Why is that? Because it's a good why. And then we can go, well, is there something we need to focus here in supporting this particular uh, art form in this particular area? What does that need? What does that have? And, you know, we get calls on a weekly basis from MPs saying, how many music projects did I have in my electorate in the last four years? And we're like, oh, God, and we've got this amazing database, but we have to fill through it. Whereas actually we can say to them, jump online, click your lecturer, and you can see. And then you can see, if you don't have any, that's when we need to know, why don't you have any? And what can we do to potentially make that happen? So it's exciting. It's very early stages. We, as I say, we're literally building it now. Hopefully next week, if you keep in touch with us, you'll see a little email that comes out and says, 
we're live and we've made this happen. So <laughs> um, don't um, please don't social media anything out just yet, because uh, but 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 support us once we've got it live. But yeah, the um, testing is all working at the moment, so it's very exciting. Um, just in context of the four key goals or the four key objectives, which just come back to the, what I was talking about earlier, um, all of the RAF supported grants must develop audiences and broader com broad and community engagement with the arts. So, like it's that's pretty broad. Like you, you need to just not be completely in, inward facing. Um, developing partnerships and networks with leverage for uh, financial in-kind support for significant projects and ongoing collaboration. And that's something that also is good with RAF in that it's not, um, you don't just get one shot at it. You can't just get one grant um, and then never be eligible again. We are actually about supporting sustainability. We're about long-term and we're in it for the long-term investment. Um, we're about encouraging and supporting sustainable economic, social, cultural development in regional, rural and remote communities. Um, and about increasing employment and professional opportunities and to raise and raise the profile of artists that are practicing and that is something that I will fiercely champion in that I would ch you know we will champion that all regional remote and rural arts, arts and arts practitioners are current contemporary innovative they are artists and we want to not have that tick box of are they regional artists they are artists first and foremost if we use the tick box, we'll use that tick box, but they're artists. And that's really, really important for us. Um, I can go into guidelines and materials, but probably um, they, they are very specific to each state and territory. Oh, sorry. Um, and, um, and about eligibility. And there's just a few things here that uh, there is a form. There is a form mat, and there is a process to which RAF goes by. It's not just, I mean, we're very open and inclusive, but um, projects can't be funded in hindsight. You can't, you know, normal things, you can't be funded in a project that started and now you've decided that you can go into the RAF. Um, they can't be based in a metropolitan location other than within the ACT, which is slightly different in its context. However, you can partner, and so there can be collaborations and partnerships, but it is about supporting um, those that are living, working, and practicing outside of those boundaries. Um, and projects which do not um, align with the regional arts funds objectives, as I say, they're very state and territory based. Uh, have I got time for one more thing? One more minute, sorry. Um, and the other thing I will say is that Nathan and myself are wearing these very cute badges. Um, and we did launch last week our Increase the Regional Arts Fund campaign. Um, and so we are, and it was so exciting, in the first four hours we got responses from, I think it was 86 people from across the country saying they wanted one of our promo packs, which is so exciting because it's like, it, it, the networks are working. What we're asking for to both Coalition and Labour is an increase in the Regional Arts Fund by $2 million a year, which gets us to 21 million, which actually gets us back to where we were at 10, 2010. At 2010, we were at 21 million, and Labour cut the Regional Arts Fund to 13 million. So we're now in a true arts form. We're only asking to be reinstated to where we were a decade ago. So the ask is very valid, very real, um, and we're not actually asking for that much. But 2 million a year additional to the RAF Fund that fund will go straight out to the artists and the communities. It's not something that sits in admin. So if you want to get on the campaign, talk to me, Facebookers. Thank you.